In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can get the benefits of something like OpenAI Codex running locally on your own machine. I'm Ed Zinda, and this is What The Funk. Recently, to capitalize on the AI coding agent trend, OpenAI released a new platform they called Codex, not to be confused with the local coding agent tool or the CLI coding tool that they released a few months ago, also called Codex. The purpose of this new Codex platform is to allow developers to basically launch new coding tasks in the cloud, and these coding tasks will run against their OpenAI LLMs and then complete these coding tasks in isolated cloud environments and then create a PR to your repo with the completed task. And this is useful because you can go ahead and run multiple tasks in parallel and not worry about the AI agent actually clobbering the progress of some other AI agent because everything's isolated in its own little environment. And then you can go ahead and check the progress or check the results of the task that the AI coding agent completed and decide whether or not you want to merge that into your repo or ask it to change something, for example. But the problem with this is you're stuck using OpenAI's infrastructure to run your AI coding tasks. Now, some people may not have a problem with this. I, on the other hand, would rather run these kinds of things on my own infrastructure or better yet, run them locally so I can monitor them whenever I want to and not worry about the fact that OpenAI's infrastructure may go down or, I don't know, something that keeps me locked into any sort of big provider scares me a little bit. So I've found a nifty little tool that allows you to have the same benefit of running your AI coding agents in isolated environments, but they run locally on your machine and they use the power of Docker, which most developers already have installed on their computers and it gives you the same benefits. So you can run your AI coding tasks one after the other in parallel without worrying that they're going to clobber your main branch or clobber the progress of other agents working in the background. Now, the tool I've been talking about is a tool called Container Use and it's built by a company called Dagger. They runs a separate tool, which is somewhat related to this tool and they do orchestration of different workflows and automations. And all of this is powered by Docker and different containers, but they created this other separate tool called Container Use. Now let's go ahead and check out the Git repo. And Container Use is an MCP server that uses the Dagger stuff under the hood. And it allows your coding agent of choice to utilize containers to spin up an environment and then start building or coding inside that environment without ruining any of the code that's in your main branch. So if you read the features here, they work in isolated environments. It has real-time visibility, which I'll cover a little bit later. You can jump into the environment to see what the agent is actually doing. And then you can, once the agent is done, you can pull in their changes to your main branch if whatever test they completed is up to standards. So here they have a bunch of different ways to install. I I've already installed it on my machine. You can use one of these different methods here. One of them is just cloning the repo and then building and then copying the binary into whatever path, or you can just run this install script. I did the Go installation and it's already running on my machine. Next, you're going to want to configure it for the agent that you're using. Some people use Claude Code. There's another chat thing called Amazon Q. I've never heard of it, but they have instructions for that and cursor and VS code. So basically any coding editor that has AI and MCP capabilities, they have instructions for how to do that. For the example in this video, I'm not gonna be using any of those applications. I'm just going to be using an application I wrote myself called MCP host. And all MCP host is, is just a lightweight wrapper around LLMs and allows you to add different MCP servers. So. It's just a tool I built for testing out different MCP servers. Uh, I built this around the time that MCP first came out and not a lot of tools actually supported MCP servers. I just needed a way to be able to 
build MCP servers and test them. And this is what I built. Uh, I've recently refactored it quite a bit to make it look a little better. And I've added a couple of interesting features. So the feature we're going to be using in this video is a scriptability feature. So I have this scripting mode and you can literally just write almost like a bash script uh, with some front matter for the configuration. And so we're actually going to use the container use just like the example in this readme. And I configure the MCP server here with the command. It's going to run in standard IL mode and then we're just going to pass in a prompt ourselves. I'll show you later in the video. But basically, if you give this script execute permissions, you can run it just like any command on your system. And I've already done that. I've uh, configured uh, the CU or the container use MCP server with a custom system prompt. And uh, I just have a script called AI dev. And I can literally just run it with a argument dash P and give it whatever prompt I want. So that's what we're going to do in this example. So I'm in a directory called cu to do. Uh, let's see what's in it. I've just got a readme file and it's a pre-initialized git repo. In order for the container use to work, it needs to be a git repo. And I've also had issues trying to run anything from scratch. So there needs to be at least one file in the repo for whatever reason. So I created this empty readme. So now I'm going to run this AI dev command and we've loaded the MCP host application I told you about. Let's go ahead and prompt it to create a hello world app using Flask and Tailwind. And it's thinking for a little bit and you can see it's using this container use MCP tool called environment open. Um, and all that's doing is creating a brand new environment. Sometimes it errors out, but the great thing about LLMs is they can learn from their mistakes and try again. So we're going to see that it's going to run all of these different tools that are part of the container use MCP. Another thing we can do is actually watch what's happening. So let's go ahead and open up a floating window and run this CU watch command. And as you can see, we had our head or the the base of our Git repo, but it's created this brand new branch. And you can see that it's starting to add its own commits as it continues working on this branch. As the AI agent works in the background, it's gonna be writing to different files. And then once it's done writing, it's going to make the different commits. And then you should be able to see every new commit using this CU watch command. So it hasn't made any new commits yet, but uh, we should see some in a little bit. So now that the agent has made a little bit of progress, we can see some new commits. So we can see that it wrote a bunch of files here, some requirements.txt for the Python stuff, some HTML files for the different pages. And if we go back, we can see that the agent has finished the application and it gave us a nice little summary. And it also started the server in the background. So it gave us an external URL. And we can go ahead and visit this in our browser. All right, now's a good as time as any to let you know that if you close out your IDE or coding agent while the app that's being built is running, it will actually close out the running app. So I actually did that before opening up the browser and I had to regenerate the app. That's why the URL is a little bit different. So if you want to keep previewing the app that you're working on with your AI agent, you need to keep your IDE open because as soon as you close the IDE, the MCP server will also be closed and that instance of the app running in the container will be closed down. And I'm not sure if there's actually a way to go ahead and hook into the same exact environment. You're probably going to have to merge from that environment back into your repo and then restart your coding agent to kind of restart the service. But here we can see we've got our Flask, but Tailwind, the Hello World app, got some clickable buttons. It looks like there's an about page and a home page, and it looks fairly nice. So let's go back to the terminal and I'll show you a few more things about container use. Now back in my terminal, I'm back in the CU to do directory. Let's do an LS real quick. And you can see we only have this readme file, but if we do a CU list, we can see this is the environment that the agent created to do its work. And what we can do, since we like the work that it did and we want to include it in our project, all we need to do is run cu merge and then the name of the environment. 
So I'm going to copy this, paste this, and it went ahead and merged everything it created into the main or the root of my repo. So let's do an ls again. And we can see we have all of these files. We have the app.py. We have the templates. So let's ls templates. And we can see all the index.html, etc. So now what we can do, say we want to add a new feature or we want to change something in this repo or in this project, we can go ahead and ask the agent to go ahead and make some changes. But in this example, I'm going to ask the agent to make some changes in parallel and we're going to see how that works out. So I'm going to say modify this application by creating two different variations. One that is Pong and the other that is, I don't know, let's say Emo MySpace inspired. Give me both bells when finished. So this is going, hopefully going to ask the agent to develop both of these variations in parallel and then I can go ahead and inspect each of them and decide which one I like best and then merge that one. So let's go ahead and kick this off. Actually, I think what's happening is the agent is trying to edit both themes inside the same environment. So let me go ahead and close this out. I'm going to try again. Build two variations of this app in two separate environments. One with cyberpunk theme and the other with an emo myspace theme. Give both URLs when finish. I can't type today. So let's see if this will kick off two separate environments, which is what I want it to do. Looks like it needs some prompting. I'm going to ask it to just modify this current hello world glass app. So it's going to open up and have a look at the original app. All right, now it's creating a brand new environment for the cyberpunk version. And we'll just go ahead and let that run. All right, we can see that it went ahead and edited a bunch of things to create the cyberpunk theme. And then it went ahead and started the server for that. And then the emo MySpace theme and created a different environment for that one. Uh, and then at the end, it gave us the URLs for both of them. So let's go ahead and check those out. So here I have opened up the supposedly cyberpunk version. And I don't know what happened, but it didn't do a very good job, it seems. So all we see is this grid and basically nothing else. So I can safely say we're probably going to discard this version. Let's go ahead and check out the emo MySpace version. Now this one, it did a lot better job. And this actually takes me back. I don't know how old uh, some of you guys are, but if some of you are old enough to remember MySpace, this is almost exactly how it looked, especially if you went to somebody's profile who considered themselves emo. Yeah, I like this My Chemical Romance with Darkness. Yeah, this is perfect. So if we really wanted to use this, a different variation all we need to do is run the command like before um, but i'm going to show you how you can actually jump into one of these environments and actually inspect the files inside before actually merging something so we'll go back to the terminal for that now back in the terminal let's go ahead and do cu list one more time and we can see we have a bunch of different environments but the two we're interested in are these. This is Cyberpunk and the Emo MySpace. Uh, as you recall, the Cyberpunk one had some issues. So say we wanted to go ahead and check what went wrong. Uh, we can do something like this. So CU terminal and then the name of the environment. And we'll go ahead and drop us into the actual container uh, so we can see uh, what's going on. So we can do something like cat app.py or we could go into the templates. Let's actually try running this with bash for a better term. No, oh, we're running in bash, whatever. So I don't know, I'll just check out index.html. I'm not going to debug what happened, but say you wanted to kind of review the code and see what went wrong, you could do that that way. And I believe this is an Ubuntu container that it's running in. So let's see if your name works. Uh, no, it doesn't look like Ubuntu. I don't know. Let's see if we can install Vim. Yeah, so it's basically Ubuntu or Debian. It has apt 
So if you wanted to actually edit things from within the terminal, you could install a Vim like I'm doing now and then edit that stuff. But we won't go into that in this video. And that's how you can run your AI coding agents inside isolated containers without having to worry about whether or not the agents are going to destroy what's in your main repo or interfere with other agent jobs that are working in parallel. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to smash that like button. If you have any comments or questions, leave them down below. If you'd like me to make some other videos about container use or maybe a video about the MCP host, application I told you about, let me know in the comments below as well. Once again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.